Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found with at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www dot patreon dot com forward slash from the shadows you can receive books stickers coffee mugs and special content just for our patreon subscribers check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer well that's all i have for you right now folks and thanks for being a part of the from the shadows podcast family so with that being said let's get this episode started Hey everyone, this is Shane Grove, your host of the From the Shadows podcast, and with me is Daryl, the super producer. (laughs) You'll figure that out after you listen to the episode. (laughs) Well, hey, once again, we are here at the the brand new studio for the From the Shadows podcast in the heart of suburban lanes here in North Central Ohio. Uh, We are guests of Sean and Tasha Ridgeway, so make sure... If you're in North Central Ohio and you're looking for a place to bowl, uh, come check out Suburban Lanes. If you're looking for some pizza, check out Breezy's Pizza. They also own that. And if you're looking for a place to uh, go dancing, listen, look, see some live music. They got some. They got some great live music coming up. Check out Dillinger's Entertainment Center. Um, tell uh, tell Sean and Tasha when you order a pizza, you want the From the Shadows podcast special. There you go. I don't know what it is, but just tell them you want it, okay? <laughs> and at Suburban Lanes, uh, join them on a Friday night, and they have karaoke. Karaoke every Friday night, karaoke. from eight till twelve. Maybe one, maybe one time we'll uh, we'll do the podcast from karaoke night, and you can uh, maybe you guys can hear me do my Barry White. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jason is not impressed. Right, He's not impressed. But hey, we have uh, we have a very cool episode coming up for you guys. We have uh, Melanie and Leanne. So they're two eyewitnesses who have had different uh, Bigfoot, Dogman, cryptid experiences here in the state of Ohio, and they wanted to come on and tell us their stories. And we hope you enjoy them as much as we did. Uh, when we heard them. Oh, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. So stick around here for the podcast. Check out Melanie and Leanne and tell us what you thought of the episode on the After the Shadows uh, Facebook group. Enjoy the show. So joining us on this first half of the uh, uh, this week's episode is Melanie. So Melanie, welcome to the From the Shadows podcast and Thank you so much. We're we're anxious to, I mean, I know a little bit about your story. Jason has no idea. He's here to be surprised. I mean, that's the only reason we really do the shows to entertain Jason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the only reason. (laughs) I seek entertainment. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to get it. You're going to get entertained. (laughs) Good. So, so Melanie, you want to tell the listeners uh, a little bit about, like, maybe where you're at and just kind of go into, you know, the the first story and let's just see what happens okay sure well i don't live there anymore um now i live in the city i'm i'm hating it but i used to live in a place called atwater um atwater ohio it's in portage county and there's a lot of sightings in portage county um it's it's a little town little i mean there's one flashing light in the whole town there's no um there's 
there's a Dollar General, there's a Circle K. It's all farms, all woods, and lakes. It's it's just a very small little town. Um, so I at this time my daughter was a teenager, and I was raising two grandkids, and my grandkids were nine and five at the time. And every night I would, we'd go for a deer ride to see if we could find some deer because there were just deer everywhere. So one night I piled him in the car. It was only my granddaughter that came. My, my daughter didn't want to go. My grandson didn't want to go. So me and my granddaughter, who was nine, got in my van and we started just driving down the back roads and almost every road in Atwater is a back road. And we were coming down a road called Porter. Now on Porter Road, there's a, there's a Christmas tree farm that the the very back of it comes up to Porter Road. And across from the Christmas tree farm is just woods and swamps. So we're coming up on this, and we haven't seen any deer, which was really strange because it was summer, and we always did see deer. So we're coming up on the Christmas tree farm in the back of it, and all of a sudden my granddaughter yells, and in front of my van probably... I'm going to say 20 feet in front of my van. This thing came out of the Christmas tree farm, and it was loping. I can't, I'm not even going to say it was running. It was, like, loping across the road in front of my van. Now, it was on all four feet. I didn't see it stand up. But it was black. It was covered in fur. And it was eight feet long if it was a day. It was It was huge. And my granddaughter said, Grammy, what is that? And I said, baby, I don't know. And it loped in front of the van, and it wasn't going really fast. Um, if there was something about its back legs. They either had an, they were too long. They were just too long for its body. Um, it wasn't huge. Its chest was huge. It was kind of thin. I mean, thin for its size. But its chest was like a pit bull's. It was huge. Its head was just... Just average, it kind of matched its body, matched its chest. It was big. It, w- it was bigger than a dog's or a coyote's or a wolf's head. Its tongue was hanging out the side. Um, I don't recall seeing teeth. It had ears. It had a muzzle. Um, but its back legs were so odd. And like it, it was almost like it wasn't used to running on four legs. They, it was like if you and I got down on our hands and feet, and tried to run, how awkward we would look. That's how it looked. It, it was like its back legs were just too long. Um, so we had like plenty of time to see it because it was not going fast. But it had that, that people talk about that look that they have on their face that's just kind of, what's the word people use? It's it's like a crazy look. It had that crazy devil- look on its face. Kind of devilish, like, it, like it's... Laughing at it you. It was like grinning almost. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Like a like a It knows something that you don't. <laughs> exactly. Or or it was amused that we were seeing it. I'm not really sure. It was just yeah, it just had this wicked look on its face. Tongue hanging out the side, ears up. The ears weren't especially big. Um they kinda went with the head. And it with those back legs, there was just something about those back legs. And it went in front of the van. And it went off and went into the woods across the road and disappeared. And I literally, the feeling of dread came over me and I almost got sick. It was, I've never experienced anything like that. When I was looking at it, I think I was holding my breath even. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm a country girl. So I've seen all kinds of animals, wolves and coyotes and, you know, all kinds of dogs. This was like nothing I'd ever seen in my life, and it was huge. And it just, when it finally got past, I'm sure I let my breath out, and I just, this feeling came over me. It just washed over me like I was going to be sick. I was just terrified. It was gone, and I was terrified. Um, so that was that incident. Well, um, well, before we go, before we get any further, I mean, I just want to, like, to the listeners, I mean, I know what you do for a living, okay? So you are around animals, you know what looks natural, like you said, you're you're a country girl, 
We all know what a dog looks like. We all know what a coyote looks like running across the road. And right. when you see something that doesn't look natural, and it doesn't, I mean, it's not that it didn't look natural because it was missing a leg or it was, you know, you know it just. It, right. It wasn't running like a dog or a coyote run. It was loping because those legs were so odd in the back. And its feet were kind of pointed outwards a little bit. Not completely, but a little bit. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, we hear that a lot, that some of these creatures that normally walk on two legs, when they want to get down on all fours, they they move fast, but they don't necessarily look good doing it. Yeah, they don't like No, it's like natural. if a human did it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it was so unnatural for it. I'm so curious. Uh, what, what did his ears look like? Were they pointy, uh, but yet small, or... They were, yeah, they were kind of, they went with the head. They did, they weren't huge. Okay. Um, and I don't recall seeing a tail, but I was, I was so engulfed by those legs, but I don't remember seeing a tail on it. Um, and I think it was big enough. If it would have had a tail, I'd have seen it. Right. The right. ears were, the ears weren't necessarily really pointy, but they weren't round either. They were, they were kind of pointy, but not sharp points. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so it, it was and, scary. And yeah, I, I mean, and everything that you're saying, you know, everything that you're saying, where you you saw it and it looked at you with that little like mischievous kind of a side thing. glance. It didn't turn its head, yeah. but it was looking at us like side eyes, you know, yeah, with that, this smear on its face. I mean, that's what you hear all the time. Is is that these these thing? You know, if we're going to assume this is a a, a dog man type creature. Mm-hmm. And it's not, I mean, a coyote and a, or a dog don't normally look over at you and grin, you know? No, <laughs> so, no, they don't. They're trying to get, they're trying to get away, run as fast as oh, they Oh, the look on its face was, it was like it was amused almost that somebody was seeing it. So it almost That's seems... the feeling I got. Like it was just, it was looking at us like it was amused. No, what, no, what did your granddaughter, I mean, other than screaming, did I mean, what was her... Oh, she just wanted to go. She was just freaking out. That, bless her heart, she probably... She's 20-something now, and she probably still has nightmares about that. She was so scared. And she's a country girl. She, You know, I raised her all her life. She was around horses and dogs, and she's seen coyotes, and, you know, she wasn't oblivious to, to what animals are supposed to look like. And she was petrified. She did not know what that was. She just couldn't believe she was seeing something like that. Well, I've seen, a, you know, because I live in the country too, and I've seen, I've walked mistake, you know, surprised coyotes, okay? And it doesn't give you a feeling of dread, <laughs> a dr- of dread. You know what I'm no. saying? No. So, I mean. No, it was just, it just was, made, it made me sick even. Wow. Yeah. So did I mean, you ever see a dog man? I have not, but uh, the judge. Oh, they're terrifying. Yes, the judge who is, uh, you know, with us sometimes on the podcast had a had an account or an experience when we were in high school, and uh, oh wow, I mean, it took him thirty years to come to grips with what he saw. You know, and there's it, something about it; it just affects you. Look, I I'm because a, you know it's not normal. Well, I'm a I'm a mailman during the day, and I don't even like just seeing regular dogs. So I just <laughs> no. I just get oh God, no! I bet <laughs> they don't like you guys. No, they don't. Like, they don't like they them don't. at all. It's the uniform, I think. Uh, well, I think most of the owner most of their owners don't like me either on my route. <laughs> so I don't even know. Maybe it's just goes hand in hand with the dog. Stop bringing them bills. They think you're slow. Yeah, stop bringing them bills, and maybe they will stop sending their dogs after you. <laughs> you know why I think dogs don't like mailman? Because you come to the house, but you never come in. You come and you leave, and you come and you leave, but you never come in. I think it makes them weirded out. Oh yeah, they're territorial. Yeah, I'm, I, that makes a lot of sense. Well, what do they think I'm going to come in if they're going to sit there and bark at me and show their teeth? I'm not coming in. <laughs> come on. Come on. That's not a very welcoming uh, invitation. Come on in. I'm going to bite your leg. Oh man, you're not get- I live in the city now, and everybody's got a pit bull, oh. and they're all like, they all treat you know got them mean, oh. and they're not mean dogs. So it's just weird in the city. So, so, so now, 
did you ever so have you did you stop your nightly deer rides or oh no you kept going well, we did for a little while um i couldn't get any of the kids to go because of course destiny told her brother and then i told molly my daughter and they were like oh no we're not even dealing with that but then after about a week i talked them into it again it was just something that we did every night it was just enjoyable and um so we, we would go every night, but then, then we had another experience, and I don't know what it was this time. Hmm. Well, what, uh, what, so what happened in this experience? Yeah. Okay, so we didn't go down toward a road anymore. Um, we kind of steered clear of that. So we went down by the lake, um, Walborn Lake, is it? Walborn and Deer Creek, they're right there. And we were down by the lake, and there's a little back road that kind of loops around um, there's a road called Strope, and there's, and I can't remember the name of this little road. It's just a little road that loops around. Um, there's no houses or anything. It's almost a dirt road, and it's all trees and brush back in there. So we were looking for deer, and, and we're driving down Strope, and we decided we were going to take that loop road and, and see if we could see any deer on the loop road. So it was me and, and Destiny and Bobby. That's my granddaughter and grandson. And Bobby was five. Destiny was nine. And um, so we go around this loop, and we get about to the top of the loop, and a deer runs in front of the van, just like right in front of it. I almost, I almost hit it. And I'm looking to see where this deer ran to because where it ran to, it just kind of dead ends into a lake. And I'm looking to see if I can see where it went. So Destiny starts screaming, go, 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 Grammy, go. And I said, what is the matter? And I, I was looking at her, and I looked at what she was staring at, and about nine feet up in the brush, nine, ten feet, maybe ten feet, were these two red spots, big red spots. And they were probably, oh, eight inches apart, seven inches apart. And now there's no houses on this little road. It's It's just all brush and woods. So I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, what could that be? You know, it's it's not a house. It's not, there's no electricity back here. So it's not like, all of a sudden they blink. These two red spots blink. Mm. And I freaked, I got us out of there. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a dog man or a Bigfoot, but it was tall. Whatever it was, it was tall. And they had red eyes. They weren't glowing like... Like, they didn't have a light of their own, but they were bright enough that you could see them in the dark, if that makes any sense. Yes, it does make yeah. <laughs> It does make a lot. As someone who is... Now, what do you think that was? Do you think it was a dog man or a big foot? Well, listen, I, you know, you're ta- the area that you're talking about, okay, so, you know, we were in outside of Oberlin last summer, so... Mm-hmm. We're, yeah. It's kind of a, you know, we're all in the same area, same sort of area. And we were in the Right, woods. I know where Oberlin is. We, we were in the woods where there had been some p- reported Bigfoot activity. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was, we were with, uh, you know, Amy Boo, who's a seasoned, uh, very well-respected, well-known Bigfoot researcher. And Amy Boo and I, in the woods... I I looked and I I saw a couple red. This is how you're describing. It looks like you know, it looked like reflectors. Maybe look like, tan, right. Like it could have been. I mean, everything that you you, you got to rationalize it in your head because the last thing, you, just like you're saying, there's no houses. That, you know, you're you're trying to and there's no electricity. So yeah, you're trying, yeah. But it but it doesn't make sense as to why you're out in the and middle they were too far apart to have been a raccoon. Yeah. Well, it's gone. I mean, these things were yeah. far apart and big. Yeah, and that's and that's what I'm saying is is you try to you know you're trying to the process of elimination of because you you don't want to say okay well there's a nine foot tall, um, eight hundred pound uh, bipedal uh, animal out there, twenty thirty forty yards away from. That's what I thought though. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking after seeing the dog man. Yes. I was convinced it was something. Well, we didn't think, I didn't want to think that when we were in the woods until I asked Amy Boo. I said, do you see those? And she goes, yes, I do. And then all of a sudden they were gone. And, you know, when, oh you, my gosh. when you're, you know, when you're, when you're someplace where the lights shouldn't be or those, you know, shouldn't be to begin with, 
and then they disappear. <laughs> it's even. Do you, did you hear any noise? No, we did not hear any noise. But we were in a group. I mean, we we're a large. Yeah, it was group. a group. It was about twelve of us yeah, out there it total. A, it was a good sized group. So, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So so we didn't. I mean, we didn't think we'd see anything. Yeah, you know? we really didn't think so because you know people did you were go making after noise. It? Uh, no, I'm not. No. As, I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, but I mean, well, let me ask you: Did you jump out of the car and go after? Go after? Oh God, no! I got us out of there. There you go. That's when they blinked, I was done. Well, there was I'll things don't blink. <laughs> I thought that it was the guides. I thought that maybe it was over there because the guides were in that direction. The guys that led us out there to this area because they said this was the area that uh, the sightings and uh, people had been having activity. So they took us now, out Was there. it Dogman or Bigfoot that they were seeing? Bigfoot. It was Bigfoot activity. Yeah, there had actually been a... Okay, so that's the red eyes then. Yeah. See, that's what I'm thinking that it was. Yeah. There had actually been a sighting by the by the uh, camp manager. Like, the, it, was, it, was a, yeah. it, was out, it was around a uh, RV camping uh, spot. Up oh, there. yeah. There had been a sighting and, and then there had been uh, a vocalization as well. That was her. Oh. Several different people. Yeah. So. See, Atwater's had a, Atwater's got old mines, and there have been. If you look up Atwater, Ohio, and Bigfoot, and there have been so many sightings. Now I fish at West Branch Reservoir. There's been a lot of sightings there, and I fish at night and I fish alone. And Why? you would not believe the Why? things I hear. Why? Why do you fish alone at night? That's some of the best. Oh, I love it. Right I there. just love it. I like I yeah. like musky, and they they love to bite at night. Mm-hmm. And Magador, that's a Magador Reservoir is another big hot spot. And I fish there alone at night. And yeah. one night I was at Magador, and a deer came tearing through the woods. Now the dock I fish on, it's a fishing dock, but it was late at night. It was probably one in the morning. There was nobody else out there. This deer came crashing through the woods, jumped in the lake, and swam like hell across the lake. And I'm standing there thinking, it, it seemed like it was being chased by something, because it was it was hauling ass. And I don't know what was chasing it, but I, the things you hear at night around those reservoirs is is weird. Uh, you're way bra- You're way more of a woman than I am. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bright, probably. I don't think you, I don't oh, think you realize what you just hey, said. I got my taser. Exactly what I just said. I mean, so so let's go back to you seeing the the red, and and we'll just call them eyes. So obviously your your granddaughter had seen something. Yes. Oh yeah, because I was looking for where the deer went because there was nothing but lake over there. And I'm looking at where she's staring, and, and she was crying hard. She was so scared. Bless her heart. I probably have given this kid nightmares for life. <laughs> well, <laughs> did she did she ever, like, uh, verbalize seeing anything, or did you ask her? Or you Oh, just... yeah, yeah, she saw them. Oh, she did? Because all the way home, that's what she kept saying. They were red eyes, Grammy. Those were red eyes. Okay, so she said the red eyes, but she didn't see what the red eyes were in. As far as no, you couldn't. It was so dark because there's nothing. It was so late. It was. I mean, it must have been eleven o'clock, ten thirty, eleven o'clock. So, it, and it was dark that night. It was just a really dark night. So there wasn't any. I don't even know why. why how we could see them because they weren't glowing, but they were definitely there. I mean, they, maybe it's just because they were red against the blackness, where you couldn't see anything else. Maybe if I would have sat there and like focused a little. But when they blinked, I couldn't. When I when they blinked, I had to get out of there because. Well, when they blinked, I got one kid crying and screaming. I got another one in the back seat crying. Well, when they blink, then you know they're not just like a tail light or you know a reflector or something like that. You know. That- yeah, there were no roads. We was we were on the only road, and from there it was just brush and woods. I mean, there was nothing where those red eyes were. There was nothing behind it. No houses. No anything. Holy moly! You you know you you're way braver just to keep going out and looking for, for this. <laughs> oh, I, I love it! I just love it. I, it just really is fascinating to me. So, so now I you... also happen I know where there's a habitat, but I don't know if it's a bigfoot or a dogman habitat. Really? So you've seen like yes. seen like what when you say habitat? What do you what are you referring to? 
okay, you go where we lived. It was behind us was a railroad track, like a railroad went through there, and it was woods all the way to the lake. It was nothing but woods. So, and then it, and then the back of the lake, Wallborn Reservoir. Okay, so it went down to the railroad tracks. You could walk about a mile. There was a path that went about a mile back in, and it dead ended at a. There was there's an oil well on the right. Okay, if you walked into the oil well by the oil well and cut into the woods there, if you went back about 30, 40 feet, there's an old Indian burial ground that is only the old timers in this town knew about it. Most of them had died, so nobody even knew about it. But a friend of mine had found, like, bones and stuff and, um, like, epiphanies, and and he found a, a pipe carved out of flint. So it was... It was like a burial ground for Indians because it was all Indians at one time back in that water. If you went past this burial ground, there were two trees that were about 30 feet, 40 feet tall, and they were they were positioned in an X. Now, if you went past this X, you came into this almost like a clearing. Um, but, I mean, we're talking, it, this is the middle of nowhere. It was kind of a clearing, and there was a corral built out of, and I mean, it was like in a, maybe a third of a moon shape, you know, a half, not a half a moon, but maybe a third. And it was 20 and 30 foot trees and they were all stacked and the ends were kind of stuck together so that it made a corral. Um, there, the tree bends and the, and all kinds of different structures were built back in there. And then if you went through that clearing, you came to the back of the lake. So there was nothing. It was just the, there was the back of the lake with like the cattails and the swampiness, you know, how the back of the lakes are. Mm -hmm. And then there was this area that had this corral built. And all I could think is they, that something, either Dogman or Bigfoot, was one deer into it. And they could, no, I didn't see any carcasses or any bones. But that's the only thing I could think that they would build this thing for. Because it was like a fence almost. It was made, but these trees were giant. They were like 20 and 30 feet that this thing was made out of. So, so it wasn't like somebody went back there with a chainsaw and... and oh, no, these were all broken off. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. That, wow. And I mean, all the structures were big trees. They weren't like little pieces of trees. They were huge trees. So it was, and they were definite structures. They weren't just the wind blew them down. Now, now how cool okay, so one year, because oh, okay. we lived right by this thing. I mean, it was a mile. It was probably a mile and a half from our house. Okay, so my last experience. Should I tell you that one? Yes, oh, no, please. No, no, do we tell. Don't, we don't want to hear another one. Do tell. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, so, so I was working at a barn, and it was a racing barn. So what we would do is... I would work at the barn all day. I'd come home, change clothes, go back to the barn. We'd load up the horses, and we'd go to the racetrack. So we got home from the racetrack. By the time we got the horses put up and put away, it was probably 1230 at night. So my boyfriend, the guy I was seeing at the time, he lived close to this. So my daughter and my grandkids weren't living with me then. My daughter was 16, and... I just, I called her and I said, I'm going to stay at, at his house because it's right here and I'm beat. So I went to his house. Six o'clock in the morning, my phone rang and it's my daughter. And she said, Mom, you got to get home right now. Now, this is winter time. And the snow was probably a foot deep on the ground. It was the middle of winter. And I said, What's the matter? And she said, You just got to get home. You got to, I'm not even going to tell you. You just got to see it. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, she, you know, she's a teenager. What could have happened? So I get dressed, I get home, and I walk in the front door, and she goes, come outside. And I said, okay, and we went out the back door, and we had we had these catalpa trees. They were, I don't know, do you know what a catalpa tree is? No, I don't know what it is. They're, they're very straight, they're huge, they're big around, they're really straight, and they're about 80 feet tall. They're, they're just gigantic trees, and they were all the way around the house. Well, when you went out the back door to the right, there was one. And 
to the left was a dog fence. I had my three dogs out there, and we had a fence built around it. And at the base of this catalpa tree, she walked me over there. There was a footprint. Now, there's a foot of snow on the ground, and this is a barefoot footprint. It had three toes, and it may have had a fourth toe, but if it did, it was very small. It was thick at the top and then narrower towards the heel, and there were claw marks. And where the toes were, there were claw marks. There was one at the base of the tree, like it had dropped down from the tree. Mm -hmm. About five feet in front of that one was, was the right, that was the left foot. Five feet in front of that one was the right foot. About six foot in front of that one was another left foot. Then it had turned and it had went back to the dog fence. It had gone, it had turned and went to the dog fence. At the dog fence, the footprints shuffled back and forth like it was all shuffled up. Whether it was something was excited or frustrated at the dogs barking, she said the dogs were going literally nuts that night. And the way they were barking and carrying on, she was terrified to go downstairs to see what it was. Well, then they, these footprints proceeded back through the yard, far like six feet apart at least, and then across the road and into the woods across the road. And those woods went on for miles. I don't know what it was, but it didn't look like the footprints I've seen of Bigfoot. It did look like the footprints I've seen of Dogman. Well, so the, I don't know what the footprints were. Well, the fact that you the fact that it was out. sitting in that tree. There you go. There you go. That's right. It was sitting in that tree. How long it had been sitting there? Because her window was right there. Her bedroom window was like right there. And this was late at night. This was like one or two in the morning that this happened. She told me. So it, whatever was there had probably been watching her through her window. Because been, it was, had been it had to have been up in the tree. Yeah, had been watching her through the window, and then the dog started barking, giving away its its position. Yep, <laughs> and it jumped down. Right, and it's like, shut up, guys, shut up. See, that's what I think. I think it was pissed that the dogs were because she said she'd never heard the dogs. Carry out. They were like yelping, and you know that they were barking so hard they were yelping, and she had never heard them do that, and she just was scared to go down there and and see what was going on. And so she just stayed in her room. If she didn't know that thing was in the tree, I don't know what she would have done. But when she came down in the morning and saw the footprints, she knew it had been up in the tree. Now, do dog men climb trees? <laughs> I, I think they can pretty much do whatever they want to do. I mean, as far, I mean, from that standpoint, I mean, I've heard them, you know, on roofs. I've yeah. heard, you know, if, if they can get up on a roof, they can certainly get up in a tree. I'll yeah. tell you what doesn't get up right. in a tree, a coyote, a German shepherd. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't and know. these footprints, were, they weren't that big. They weren't that long. They were maybe, I'm going to say like eight inches, seven, eight inches long. So they weren't huge footprints. Well, that's big. Um, for a, they were big enough, though. Yeah, very big for a, <laughs> for for a canine yeah, type, right. you know. Holy right, smokes. and they were long. You know, they weren't like a little dog footprint. These were long. And it's always a common occurrence. And the occurrence. fact that they started at the base of the tree was really odd. Yeah, it's always a common occurrence, it seems like, when people have pets or domesticated dogs around. They act They act funny. They they know that there's something out there that they can't wrap. Oh, they did. Their, yeah, they, they can't wrap their mind around. And then whatever it was walked up to the fence, and that must have really, that must have been when they were yelping and yeah, more just than really going crazy. Yeah. So, I, I want to. I wanted to ask you that that corral that you got that you discovered back there. How close is that area to where you saw the uh, thing cross the road in front of you and your dog? the dog man? Yeah. Um, it's probably. See, that was um, that was about. I'm going to say three quarters of three quarters of a mile a mile from my house, the other direction. Okay, so see, it was it was like if you went out, if you went out of my driveway and made a right, that's where I saw the dog man. But if you went out of my house and made a left, that's where you go back to where that habitat is. Well, what, well and I don't. And know. as a matter of fact, I've got a group going on Saturday, and we're going to go investigate all these places. 
We'll s- so I will definitely let you know if we see anything. If you get back to this yes. place where the corral is, and the corral is still there, that I would love to see pictures of that. For sure. Oh, I'm going to take so many pictures for you. I'm hoping it's still there because we lived there. It's been probably eight years okay. since I've been. I, I was back there two weeks ago, but I didn't go back into it. Was there was so much snow. And my car was having a hard time. They had the gate open, which is really weird. So I just drove back there. But there was so much snow. Um, the guy I was with had no desire to go check out the habitat. <laughs> so <laughs> none. I told him all the stories, and he was like, nope, nope. So I'm really, really interested to see if it's still there. I, I imagine it is because nobody goes back there. They don't even know it's there. Right, and uh, you're only talking a mile away from your place. Oh, less, that's less that's than a not mile. yeah, yeah that's not mile. very much difference for a dog man or even something that, like a Sasquatch would 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 cover that very easily. Well, right, well, right. So see, that's what I mean. I don't know what that I don't know what that habitat is. Now the X at the entrance of it made me think Bigfoot, right. but the footprints in my yard were not Bigfoot. Well, they were definitely. Canine. Well, Melanie, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't know how much research you've done, but I, I will tell you the one thing that we have basically concluded is is that dog man and a lot of the dog man, most of the dog man sightings coincide with Indian burial grounds. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And, yes. So, and how weird is that? There's that Indian burial mound, then there's habitat, then there's the lake. I don't think it's weird at all, to be honest with you. I, it didn't surprise me at all when you said there was an Indian. There is definitely, yeah. yeah. the 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 information that's been leading to that has been astounding. I mean, it's it's something to it. There is definitely a correlation. What do you think that is? What do you, why do you think they they are are gravitated towards Indian burial mounds? Because because of the history. Well, no, I, listen, and this is just my hy- mm-hmm. hypothesis. This is what I believe and talk is that. Is that they're not fully a flesh and blood creature? I mean, we may experience them as flesh and blood creatures, but they are part of the spirit world mm-hmm. for the most part. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. they have a, some type of supernatural nature, and I think they are tied. And the Indians really knew a lot about them. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yes. They like did. it's a shame yeah. that there are so many that are gone because they really knew about them. Yep. Yeah, and then and and it's the same. It's the same with Bigfoot. You mm-hmm. know, most Native American tribes have a Bigfoot myth or mm-hmm. a Bigfoot. Sto- I shouldn't say myth. They have a Bigfoot story, and they have a right. they have a reason for Bigfoot to be there. It's right. like a it's a part of the maybe they have a kinship. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the case. Yeah, and the and the dog man, like from what I'm have heard and from re- real, I mean, people that have researched it way more than way more than us, is that it it is definitely tied into the Indian burial mounds because they are the protectors of the dead. And so... Oh, I didn't know that. Because, well, if you... And once again, this is just stuff that we have come across, talking to ex, to people who have done a lot more research. I don't... I, see, I can't say... Every time I say expert, then we get roasted on calling somebody an expert. Oh, I bet. But, you know, I'm an expert at eating pizza, and nobody, you know, just that. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, I'm an expert at drinking beer, so I'm with you. <laughs> it'd be a but I wasn't it'd be drinking a during these times, though. I was sober. <laughs> it'd be a deadly combination. But, uh, but it, you can trace the history of these dog, half dog, half human type creatures all the way back to the beginning of time, and they sort of almost believe that that's why the the Egyptian god Anubis, who was the god of god of death, god of death, is well. Now, is weren't tied. there weren't there cave drawings of men with dogs' heads yes. in the Egyptian times? There's apparent. There's there's supposed stories that the Vikings battled uh, cultures that were half man, half dog. Um, oh, I got to YouTube that one. Well, I don't. <laughs> you can check. Oh, that's there's that's all, that's, that's mean, gonna be so cool. And there's all. I mean, there's so much. You, be careful of the rabbit hole you go down. You might not. You might not get back out. Yeah, it might be three or four hours. Isn't later. that something? It's like modern technology has has diminished it so much, but they're still there. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, 
Well, Melanie, I am so glad that you came on and told 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 us these stories. I mean, it's obvious. I'm so happy that you had me on. I, hey, w- number one, you're you're a Buckeye. Okay, we're right. our, our hearts. Our, we have a soft spot in our heart for fellow Buckeyes, and for everybody that's listening all over the world that doesn't know what a Buckeye is, it means she's from Ohio. All right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ohio, where the weather changes hourly. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's going to be a high of 32 tomorrow, just so you know. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So enjoy today. Thanks. I don't. Yeah. I don't look too far ahead for the weather, but but I work in a barn for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you telling these stories. I'm glad that uh, you're able to tell these stories, and I just hope that when you guys go out looking this weekend, that uh, if you do find something, that you guys stay safe. And are able to maybe Thank collect you. collect some evidence. And I know once everybody uh, hears hears this, they'll want to. They'll be super interested to see what the follow up is and see what kind of. Oh, I totally will send you pictures. Okay. I'm not as worried about the habitat. I've been to the habitat. Going back in the woods where that dog man went. Yeah. I'm a, I'm really nervous about that. I gotta oh, be yeah. honest. I think I'd be nervous about it all. Oh, yeah, I, I would definitely really? be nervous about going back to where that dog man was. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. I think because I don't know what we're going to find back there. Right. Yeah. Just, hey. But just be careful. Just be careful. We want to. We want. Got my cater. We want. <laughs> we want to. We want to be able to. We want to be able to hear about it. So yeah, we want so you to careful. come back on and let us know what you discovered. <laughs> so. I'll tell you what. Sunday, I will be sending you pictures. All right, we can't wait. All we right, can't wait. And we'll, awesome. And we'll Thank see. you so much, you guys. I really enjoyed this, and I it it felt really good to just get all this out. We appreciate you coming on and. Uh, Good luck this weekend, and, and like I said, all of our listeners check on check Sunday on our web on our uh, Facebook pages, and we'll have we'll put up some of Melanie's pictures. Yes, <laughs> awesome. And check out Atwater and West Branch and Portage County and all the. Just check it out in Portage County how many sightings there have been. You, you're going to be surprised. Okay, I will definitely not check that out because I'm not going up there looking. That's what we're going to You should join our group. Yeah. I'll, I'll check it's it out. It's going to be a crazy night. Yeah. All right. You guys take care. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bye. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Hey, Leanne. Um, we're going to uh, bring you into the second half of this Buckeye Babe Fest of uh, Bigfoot story. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some other uh, we people want. listening and you keep describing the show like the that. Buckeye Babe Fest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um but yeah so welcome Leanne to the uh to the From the Shadows podcast. Um you're our, you know in this episode you're our second Buckeye coming on to tell a story. I, I don't think the world knows how squatchy how dogman populated the the Buckeye Ohio? Yeah. Is. they're uh, starting to. Yeah. They're starting they really are. It's, yeah, it's really right up there with the Pacific Northwest and Texas and Ohio is right there. Yeah, it seems yeah. seems to be definitely. So, so Leanne, uh, Jason is sitting here eagerly awaiting to hear your story that I I I know from reading. So <laughs> all of our fans they don't know that all of our fans all over right? the world. So so. Why don't you go in, get into it, tell everybody what, uh, what it was that you experienced. Okay. Well, I grew up in uh, Adams County, Ohio, uh, which I grew up right in the heart of the Amish community. If anybody knows where the Amish are down there. Yes. We um, do. yep. Yes. And, uh, you know, if we go out to Miller's, you probably get past my house and just say, <laughs> <laughs> well, where I grew up, my mom still owns the place. But, uh, so in the mid nineties, uh, I was a teenager. This has been a while ago. <laughs> but, Listen, I'm uh, not, not going to say anything about the mid '90s. I was not a teenager. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, playing hide and go seek. My sisters, my two younger sisters, um, which are like five and six years younger than me, and a couple neighbor girls. And I really don't remember too much about the neighbor girls. Um, one of them was in a car accident later on uh right not too long after this incident but we were playing hide and go seek at my grandma's and uh 
we were all we had found everyone except for one girl and we were standing around the burn barrel which yeah a burn barrel it's adams county <laughs> And, Listen, uh, we had burn barrels so in Crawford County. There. Don't 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 beat yourself up. <laughs> Anybody that's really a country person had a burn barrel. Yes, exactly. Well, so we're standing there, and we're like, "Well, she's not behind the barn." And we look over, and there's this black figure, uh, which at the time we just thought a man was standing back there, like a cowboy. Uh, and I say cowboy because. I thought it had a hat on and maybe like a trench coat. And, of course, you know, we all look at each other and scream, and we look back, and it's gone. So my sisters say that they don't recall this incident, but we always said that it was that girl that was in the wreck, her guardian angel. Just because she was in a wreck that she should have died in, and she didn't, but... I think that was the only thing that we could say that made sense to us. Um, now, we didn't even go and tell uh, any adults that we had seen a guy behind the barn. Well, I mean, that, so it didn't, it spooked us, but didn't really scare us into thinking we were in harm's way. So years later, you know, we'd always said, hey, remember that thing behind the barn, blah, blah, blah. You know, and years later, I, you know, just a couple years ago, I kind of got into the Bigfoot world and community, and I've hooked up with some researchers and um, really just kind of thought, you know, what was that? And I've kind of, like, sketched it out, and now it kind of makes sense to me that that more than likely, can't guarantee it, was a juvenile Bigfoot. And I say juvenile because it was probably about six foot tall, which would made us think it was a man. Uh, but it was all black. Like there was nothing that I could set, see in my memory right now that I could say, yes, that was a man. Like I couldn't see any skin colors or, or any difference in like a shirt and a jacket or like the brim of a hat, but I can I could tell that the head went up like conical shape. Okay, and that's why you thought it was a hat. Yes, and okay. that's why I thought it was a hat. Which and a cowboy is the only thing that would have made sense to me at the time. Honestly, growing up in Adams County, I'm not even sure if we had seen Harry and the Hendersons at that point or not. Hmm. So well, and you got you know, and you got to think and and, and Amish guy would have one yep. of those straw hats on right yeah. but they would have been wearing like suspenders or, you know mm-hmm. blue so, or green or plain so this was it was still light out when you guys saw this yes it oh. was okay uh it w- i'm gonna guess it was the end of the summer because there's all hay fields around that area and we would have already did the hay um but then beyond the field there's woods. It was a 52 acre farm and most of it was wooded. Now I walked in those fields and down into the woods a lot. And there was a place called that we called the bottom. And it always felt like somebody was watching you down in there. There was the, you know, X across the Creek that, yes, I said Creek. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How um, else do you say before it? You get, How else do you before, say it? What do you well, think? you know, normal people usually say creek. No, that's <laughs> listen, we I, say creek. Hey, listen. I know, right? I, listen, I just, I, I, and this is a serious sidebar, but because you said creek, I wrote some lyrics for a song that we did for a country artist, and I wrote creek, creek but in my mind, it, I was rhyming it with another ick word and the artist is like wait a second this is creek and i go no no it's crick and they're like well, why so so yes i'm from ohio i said crick uh, and the country artist is like uh if you say so Dude. yeah <laughs> so okay so go ahead so, so there is an x down in there with two trees which never thought anything of that when i was younger either but it 
I remember, like, when the cows would get out, we were never allowed to go, like, back into the woods and hunt for them. I was the oldest of three girls, so I was, like, the boy on the farm. So I always did everything with the cattle. But whenever they got out in a certain area, we weren't allowed to go. I don't I don't know why. Um, you never ask? No. It was never one of those. You never questioned it. Um, the same, like, my dad, uh, always, he was never really a hunter, uh, but he would take the shotgun back to a certain shed that was along the wood line, which would be directly behind where I saw this figure. And he always said that it was for groundhogs because the groundhogs might attack you. <laughs> I, I mean, that I might be never, the best B horror movie saw, ever. Groundhogs yeah, exactly. attack. Yeah. Zombie so beavers. <laughs> I only, I only ever saw one groundhog on the property, and the golden retriever killed it. So maybe I mean, it's and your it was dad in, shot all the rest of them. I guess maybe, but you know, if he passed away, pro- would be, I mean, three, four years after that Ooh. incident. So I never really put all of it together to be able to ask him. Um, But uh, so some of the BFRO reports, there's one that was, oh, let's see. There was one in 2012, which is on, was on Unity Road. And uh, that crosses the road that I grew up on. Um, oh, which boy. is so also, yeah, right and it there. supposedly chased some people on an ATV. Um, and so that road is also where uh, the dairy farm was that was in the family. And so our cousins from that family would always tell us, you don't go in the woods in the middle of the night. We're like, oh, whatever. And they said, because there's a woman down in there that screams at like 3 o'clock in the morning because she went back there and hanged herself. So they were thinking it was a ghost. It was a ghost story they were telling. And that's what they'd always been told was there's a woman that hanged herself. Well, I went with that. I didn't know. Well, now that I'm older, I'm thinking... If you hang yourself, you ain't screaming. Even in the afterlife. <laughs> I would think. You know, you, I, that's, I wouldn't, so that just kind of is there too. And as the crow flies, that might be about a mile and a half away from where I saw the figure behind the barn. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it would then at that point it would have all been connected by the same wood uh you know just through different properties um there was a sighting a couple a day and night sighting according to the bfro in 2009 at the adams county airport which is i mean several miles but it's directly behind the property i grew up on so it kind of like fit that whole area. Um, the Amish always said that there was a bear in the woods by the covered bridge. Um, I've never seen or heard of bear much down in there, except for when you get on down 32 um, towards uh, Jackson or, or down in those areas, they're starting to see them more. Um, but they always said there was a bear in the woods. Yeah, but there, it, but when you're but the time frame that you're talking about, there wasn't bears in the woods. No, not like no, the, not we, like now. There wasn't, not you like know, yeah. th- there really wasn't. I mean, you had deer and maybe the off chance of coyote, but you know, turkey, pheasant, different stuff like that. But uh, I mean, really, you really didn't hear much of coyotes really no no not no so coyotes have they, really really infiltrated here even in like in right. North central ohio until for the last 15 years right basically. yeah so so did your cousins ever 
see anything, or did they just say well, well, we were told not to go not to go down there? Well, they they've never told me that they've seen anything. Um, I do have some friends that um, over towards maybe like um, the Peebles area have said that that they've heard stuff in their woods, um, and they're believers. Um, they've heard stuff in their woods. Uh, they've kind of went looking, but not really looking. More of a making sure nothing's getting their livestock uh, with their four wheelers and stuff, and have had rocks thrown at them. Oh, well, because bears yeah. do, bears do that, uh, right? Bears throw right. Rocks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Not even Yogi Bear. Uh, I don't even remember Yogi Bear throwing a rock. To be honest, with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. He just was about taking the picnic basket. That's right. <laughs> I can relate to that totally. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and uh, you know, some of the other BFRO o reports are, um, which I'm not like a firm believer in them. Uh, I think there's a lot that they hide, but there is reports that kind of confirm what I've seen. Well, there's a a place called Peach Mountain in Adams County, and growing up. We were always told that you don't go up there because there were devil worshipers up there. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why. I mean, I don't know that anybody had ever actually seen devil worshiping up there or if somebody just had the bejeebus scared out of them and it got back, don't go up there. There's crazy people up there. Or, you know, uh, something had to have happened up there. And there very well could be. Well, that, well, in that kind of culture up there, I don't know. In that time frame, especially in Ohio, was the satanic panic, so to speak. Yeah. And there was a lot. But but then that's an easy way, okay, to tell, to get kids to not go somewhere or people right. to not, go, not to go sticking their nose. Because what are you going to believe more, okay? Don't go up there because there's a Bigfoot. Or don't go up there right. because there's satanic worshipers. Because, you number yeah. one, you're probably not going to believe in Bigfoot, but you do believe that there's people up there worshiping the devil and, you know, that might slit your throat or sacrifice you to, uh, you know, right. to Beelzebub. Yeah, so, that particular yep. time it was being pushed as part of the culture. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, it, and it's the same way down in, uh, in Blue Creek. It's. It, it was always told that it was a rough bunch down there. Um, and I went to college for just a short term um, at Shawnee State in Portsmouth. So I could take the 125 to go from home and go to college. Well, everybody always said, don't go down through there at night. Don't go down through there at night. They get crazy. They throw stuff out in the road. But I've never, like, I've never met anybody that was like, yeah, we saw these crazy old drunken men throw stuff out in the road. It was, those were always just the stories that you were told to warn you from going down in there. Now, there are um, some well-known researchers that go down into that area. And uh, I know the area that they, they search and they have phenomenal evidence coming out of there. So it, it makes me wonder now, were those stories that I was told, you know, to make me think that, well, there's crazy people and not, oh, you might get down through there and see a Bigfoot. Yeah. It, listen, there's obviously something going on <laughs> in that. Part. I mean, number one, anybody that knows Ohio knows that that is a, I mean, that's an area that if there is going to be a Bigfoot. That's yep. where it's going to be. That's one of the places where it most certainly would be. Yeah, and, a hot spot. And I don't want to really freak you out, but the the first guest we had on tonight, when you said there was an ex back in the woods, guess what Guess what she said in her story, walking back in the woods, what she came across? An ex back in the woods. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. But I used to go in the woods all the time, and nobody ever said, don't go in the woods by yourself or anything. So I don't I don't think I was, you know, felt threatened or anything. But, you know, I always felt like something would watch in me in that area. Well, it, it Just seemed, in the one area, really. Well, and it definitely seems like 
when you hear these stories that that sort of symbol is kind of like them telling us, hey, listen, you can come back here, but don't go past this right. spot. And it would have right. been at the edges of, of our property, so I couldn't really go past it anyway, or I would get in trouble if my mom and dad found out. So I think that I went over there like one time, but it, it, it's a larger uh, creek that runs through there. And so traveling as a person through there would be very hard. So let, let's go back to the first, that first sighting you had that at, at that time. So you guys, so everybody that you were with, you guys just take off running basically. Right. We just like scream, look back. It was gone. And we were like, we were done playing. <laughs> it's, but it didn't cross any of your minds that it, that it was a Bigfoot. That wasn't something that even no. entered. Okay. And nope. did, did we you guys, were, did you guys talk about it amongst yourselves at all, or other than just to say that uh, was your just the like one that was weird? Like I don't really remember our, like conversation, but we all knew we saw it. Uh, my sisters don't recollect it now, uh, but but we didn't even go tell the adult. Do you like, know, do you, so how, it how weird does that feel now that you didn't go tell the adults that even if you that, thought it was a guy? <laughs> that really kind of worries me. That because I should have went and said, "There's a guy behind the barn, and he was watching us play." Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Because, because I mean, you grew up with your neighbors, you knew them all, you knew. So obviously, I didn't recognize him. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. or I, I would have been like, you know, Bobby's behind the barn, you know, or hey, come on over, you know. But no, I nobody recognized whatever it was and the, I think the only the way that we could put it into a perspective was that it was a man with a cowboy hat wow so how how far away were you from from that um, well I was trying to think about that this morning and I'm thinking like maybe 25 30 yards oh my gosh okay, I mean okay. not that far so if it was somebody that you knew, you'd obviously oh, yeah. recognize it. Yeah. Okay. And That's... if and if you were one hundred percent sure it was a man or a woman, you would have definitely. I would have been able to tell okay. facial a facial feature or you know like shirts or, but it was all black. Like it was head to toe black. And I thought you know Ooh. cowboy hat and like a trench coat. Yeah, because so, because that's what you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, that's what you – and it's so – every time we hear a story or when I'm listening to other podcasts and, and people are describing their experiences, they're always trying to fit it in the box that they can rationalize. Yeah. And so, I mean, do you know – I mean, you can pretty much, as you're telling this, realize how ridiculous that sounds. It was a guy – it was a cowboy standing there. Yeah. Right. It, wasn't yep. like, it wasn't like and, Sam Elliott but, showed up at your showed up at right. your house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it, but too, you know, like we never, there was many years I never talked about it. And until within the past couple years, I've realized what it was. And it was one of those things where, I mean, my family still was like, whatever, Leanne, whatever. And, you know, or people at work or you know, whatever. Okay, if that's what you think it was, but well, how many you know, more things I, have to happen in that area? To I know, I know. They, a lot of them just brush it off to the side. Oh well, whatever. And the, or you know, there's been the there's been the stuff one like uh, the terror in the woods on you know the Discovery Channel or um, all all those you know, and most of them are reenactments and. People say, oh, well, I, I went to school with that kid, and, and he was crazy in school. Well, probably because he wasn't getting enough sleep because Bigfoot was keeping him away. I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to say, yeah. I was going to say, if something's chased you around the woods, it might tend to make you a little crazy on edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And if you, if any, if you tell, 
told anybody mm-hmm. that at that point, well, then you're just pegged as crazy anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I mean, and basically, you know, the judge isn't here with us tonight, but that's the same thing he went through is, you know, we were in high school and he had a, a, what was it turns out we figured out was a dog man experience, but he couldn't tell, he didn't tell us when we were back in high school because we just totally made fun of him. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, we made fun of each other for much less than, than somebody seeing a, you know, seven foot dog step out of a, on its hind right. legs out of the cornfield. Okay. I mean, we, we, we find a lot less stuff to make fun of each other about. You know, but, the, but that's, know. The, that's, yeah. the, that's the truth, though, is that you, you know, you first you try to rationalize what it is I saw because you don't have back when even when you're talking, it's Bigfoot still wasn't an accepted part of. Uh, right. You know, our culture, I guess, is a lot right. is the best way to say it is now, like you said, every time you turn around, there's a show on. Uh, because that's what Pete, because think about how many people have experiences like you and everybody that we, you know, everybody we talk to ha- that mm-hmm. has had an experience went seemingly went years without saying anything, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yep. Very so common. Think, think about how many people, um, never tell their story, you know, just well, they're ne- scared right. of being ridiculed. But I'm saying though, mm-hmm. as many stories as we hear, think about how many don't ever tell it. Yeah. And oh yeah. You know, if if one of out of every four tell it, just think how many are out there, you yeah, know, with right. the story yeah, not that, said anything. Yeah. And, I mean, and and I get the whole well, how do you know how do you know he's real? You've never seen it. Well but I've seen the evidence of it. I've heard the testimonies of it and I've asked them, how, well how do you believe in God? You've never seen God, but you believe in him because of the evidence and the testimony. Mm-hmm. So Good it's kind of like, it's, yeah. and they just kind of look at you yeah. like, oh, and it kind of makes a little bit more ration, that rational sense mm-hmm. that something could exist that you don't have a physical hold of right now. Absolutely. And, and then in you telling me, I mean, I don't know how many stories I've heard. In fact, I think, uh, you know, somebody we had on just last week, Jim, said you, the same thing. He saw something. He turned his head for a second, turned it back, and it was gone. Okay? So, right. a guy. Now, this thing could have darted behind yeah. the rest of the barn and went, yeah. you know, down the tree line, and we would have never seen it. Exactly. But they're quick. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, in, in every... In every sighting, has so many same of the same points yeah. to it, and you guys are all independent of one another, and seem to experience a lot of the same stuff. Right. You know. Right. And it's not like I got together with a bunch of people and was like, "Okay, here I'll tell my story this way, and you tell your story that way." Nobody's doing that. So, it, for the people that are like, "Oh, it's a big hoax." Whoa! If I'm involved in something like that, somebody should have told me. I know. Well, maybe <laughs> you should expect a little bit of a payment, uh, in right? The mail to be maybe I'll get a check in the mail. <laughs> it would be entirely, it would be entirely too uh-huh. difficult to label everybody a crackpot. Right. Right. And you know, you know and I've heard, I've heard, you know, people say it has uh, stuff to do with the military. Well. You know, the military fly over Adams County a lot. Um, they dogfight over over Adams County a lot. I mean, I was mowing the yard once, and a fighter jet was so close, I saw the guy in the cockpit. Like, that's how low they get down through there. Wow. So, you know, I it could be maybe they were looking. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, there, there's, all, there's too many things that connect yeah. the unseen dots. I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So do you have any, now are you actively out um, searching uh, for Bigfoot? I, I actively keep my eyes open. I'm a little too worried with all the, the stories I've heard to be a night person. Um, but I have heard what have could have possibly been wood knocks 
over at Paint Creek. I live in Highland County now, and we go kayaking at Paint Creek. And there's like a cove that you can go back in, and it, you have that being watched feeling. Now, it is government ground, and, and if you could get back in there on foot, you can hunt. But the only way I know to get back in there is with a kayak. And uh, I just kind of had this feeling I was being watched, so I waited. And uh, I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to go. And it's something not. And I'm like, okay. And I waited, and I waited, and I still had that feeling like something far off might have been watching what I was doing. And I'm like, all right, I'm going. And it knocked again. And I'm like, okay, this is 530 in the evening. I, I text, you know, some of my researchers. I'm like, what are the odds that, you know, you'd hear something at 530 in the evening? And they're like, they don't really have a time frame. <laughs> so you could have. Uh, but, you know, not knowing. Uh, but, you know, I'm like, I waited for a while. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going. So, but I go back to that place. We go there several times during the summer and fall. Um I went down, I was down in Blue Creek over the summer and uh, went end up to end where they were logging. Um, I don't think that Bigfoot is up there now. I think he might be uh, mad and moved over a little bit because of all the logging in the area. Um, but I did find, somebody else must believe, because I did find what appeared to be a gift. It was like a, a zucchini with some... Uh, I think it was um, sunflowers on on some on some uh, rocks and and sticks. So somebody, I believe, gifted that. I asked the researchers that that uh, go into that area, and they said no, they did not leave that there. So, and this was probably a half a mile or more up the logging trail. Hmm. So no, no. It was probably a squirrel. Let's there, be but, honest. It was probably right? a squirrel. <laughs> you know? know that that got a, a zucchini from somewhere and was like, okay, we'll plate this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, that is incredible. So, so like, <laughs> would you want to have another encounter or not? Uh, how do you how do you feel about that? If I do want to see one. Like, I want to see one to know that that's what I saw. I don't want to see another cowboy in the woods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but I don't want one of those where they're Look, throwing stuff at me or Look, let's be honest. We, we, know, we know it's that, that, that wasn't a cowboy. We know that wasn't a cowboy. <laughs> right, okay. right. So. But I want to be sure that it's not the cowboy this time. <laughs> right. Or cowboy. I, I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I would want to know, like... I do want to see one, but I'm kind of too chicken to go see one. <laughs> well, and that's and that's the you know, that's the that's the bad thing is, is everyone wants to see yeah. one on their terms. Right. That's not how it works. They don't have terms. That's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how. It works. I guess I'll wait until there's one in the zoo, maybe. Oh boy, I think <laughs> I think I think there's one somewhere in a cage. I just don't think we're oh, going to get to buy tickets right? to go see it. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, like, I feel that way too. And, and I, I think drive, that they have some home, captured. And I drive home at night, and I'm thinking, what if? And I, I'm always looking. I, I, I'm like a guy deer hunting, but I'm not looking for deer. So, you know, I'm right. like, and then I'm thinking, what if one steps out in front of me and I hit it? I was what am gonna, I going to do? I was just going to ask you: Are you going to swerve and it, hit it on purpose? Well, maybe if you have that long, if you have the, if we can think that quick. But if I hit one, I, I have this, um, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I have the whole, <laughs> this is who I'm calling first. I'm, I'm running out the memory on my phone with video and uh, pictures. And then who am I going to send all these pictures to? Because you know they're getting erased right away. Well, you, know, there's you, you, some, have, you have my message. My like, you, know, you know how to send them to my messenger, <laughs> yes. and you can yep. send them to our email. Then, you know, could I get here? And obviously, I'm not going to call the police. 
that, oh, I just hit a Bigfoot, you know, because you're going to get the guy that says, well, we're going to have to tow your car, you know, and you're like, no, I want to keep my car. <laughs> well, it's not running. I don't care if it's not running. I want to keep my car for my purposes. <laughs> you know, it's what evidence could we get off of it? And I just, I have that. It did, my mind goes 100 miles an hour. I got to be honest. I think you better swerve and miss it because this just sounds like a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I believe it is. Well, I believe you know, it's a but lot then, of trouble. <laughs> you know, I've heard, I've heard of, you know, it, it, encounters and, and the guys try to tell somebody and their bank accounts get wiped out. And I'm thinking, well, you, okay, well, it's almost payday, so have fun with the $25. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not... It's not like there's a whole lot they could get from me, but it'd, well, be, it'd I, be something. Yeah, I'm not sure of this, but I feel that the government or military or some faction of thereof have captured uh, one or more of these beasts, and they're in the process of studying them. I mean, these creatures, I think, we just don't know about them, but I think there's factions out there that are actually studying them as we speak. Yes, and I think it's one of those, they don't want anybody else releasing that information before they get to. Precisely. Wow. That's... um... That's a pretty bold statement, pretty isn't it? Bold statement. Yeah. It is. Well, but yep. you know what? I, I can't all argue the, with it. I yeah, can't exactly. Argue all it. the evidence is leading in that Listen, direction. If we have a, if right. we have UFOs and aliens and you know their technology, how could we not have Bigfoot? Yeah. True. I mean, seriously, but we've had enough credible sightings that there's no way you can't say it does not exist. Well, Leanne, I my first suggestion to you is to is to install a dash cam because yeah. <laughs> because that might be the only way you are you would be able to uh, to get good stuff, uh, right? If you hit one, but uh, right. I mean, look, I let's let's just be honest. In Adams County, there's some Bigfoot running around. I mean, you're going to tell me that uh, yeah. uh, don't go down in the in the bottom or whatever because there's a woman screaming. I mean, that's, I mean, come on. Yeah. I've heard too many, I've heard one too many stories about Bigfoot screaming. Mm-hmm. Okay. In fact, yeah. some of our friends have on vid, on audio. The yeah. Big, of Bigfoot. Exactly. Yeah. And they've yeah. said it <laughs> sounded like a woman well, screaming. screaming. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think if you keep poking around down in Adams County, you're going to find, uh, you're going to find what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Now be careful. Mm-hmm. Be careful right. if you find what you're looking for. But uh, if, if right. you do find good evidence, uh, well then make sure you come back on the From the Shadows podcast oh, I will. and let's discuss I will. it. I will definitely, definitely, yes, definitely. Uh, well, Ian, I pre- we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you sharing um, these, you know, these stories, these experiences from you know what's going down down in your neck of the woods. And, uh, wonderful stories thank yeah. you yeah thank and if you, you. Oh. definitely if you, you you go out and you find some stuff please let us know for sure i definitely will or if i hear um i i actually have a map that i got last year of adams county and uh i want to start you know kind of pegging stuff what i'm hearing on my own oh yeah um and and seeing i seeing what i can come up with um and if I if I have one, I'll, I'll have Daryl on the show with me. That's his name, right? <laughs> yeah, that was from Harry and the Hendersons, right? No, that's Harry. No. Harry is his name. Well, I thought, well, what do I know about Daryl then? Where's Daryl from? The Geico commercial. It's the Geico commercial. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Jason, pop culture, Jason. me and pop. I'm too busy for Jason, it. Jason, you better, you better oh, edit that out of the podcast. You don't want to. No, yeah. I'm leaving that yeah. in there, buddy. I'm leaving that in there. It's it's there. Daryl, the super producer. I want, everybody, oh. I want everybody to know how busy. Busy, I am. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, Leanne, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, thank for coming you, over and hanging out with us. Oh, and, thank uh, you guys for having me. I, I really appreciate being thanks, able to get my story out there. Thanks for yes. being a fan and, and listening. You're I, welcome. I see you all over social media, so we're glad that uh, we're glad that we we have uh, some fellow Buckeyes that follow us. Yep. So, yep. Yep. This uh, 
keep looking and uh, just stay in touch with us. Yep. I will. Yep. I right. will. All right, Leanne. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, have yeah. a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh-huh. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha, 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 ha.